Hello engineers, welcome to JAL Consult. Today we will be discussing HVAC. HVAC is an acronym being used for mechanical engineering in building industry. If basically a subdiscipline of mechanical engineering, which is based on the principle of thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer, so as to provide acceptable indoor air and thermal comfort. Acceptable indoor air, although varies, but if usually between 20 to 22 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 68 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit temperature range and acceptable air quality ranges between 50 to 20 cubic feet per minute acceptable relative humidity ranges between 20 to 60 percent we all know that low humidity do irritate skin and high humidity stimulate bacterial growth let's take a look at the acronym h h means eating which implies the provision of warmth for building this is achievable by using its pumps boilers condensing furnace etc they are majorly being used in mid climb as an alternative to ac the V means ventilation, which is the science of exchanging and circulating air within the building. It may be by natural means, where the building features, such as the window, louvers, house air vents, are to be considered, or by mechanical means, using forced equipment such as fans, air and glass, exchangers, etc. The last section of the acronym is the AC. Air conditioning are the systems used in providing cooling for the building by using hydrochlorofluorocarbons, which is expressed in tons which is an equivalent of 3.5 kilowatts or 12,000 British thermal units per hour. AC can be categorized into two, the small scale system and the distributed system. The small scale system, which provides cooling lesser than two tons, can be of a window type AC or a portable type or a split unit. The split unit AC comprises of the outdoor condenser unit and the indoor compressor unit. The indoor compressor units are of six varieties. We have the wall mounted unit, ceiling kizet, floor unit, ceiling hanging unit, the concealed unit and the ducted unit. The indoor and the outdoor can be connected either by a duct or by a pipe. The second type of air conditioning, which is the distributed system, or can also be called the large-scale system, are of four types. We have the multi-split system, the VRF system, the package unit, and the chiller. The multi-split units are the larger version of the split unit but with multiple indoor units, though maximum of 10. The second type is the VRF system, variable refrigerant flow. They are also similar to the multi-split unit, but with indoor units up to 50. The VRF system also supports zoning configuration by using proprietary temperature devices for each indoor unit. With this, 
precise amount of refrigerant is released from the outdoor unit to each indoor unit without each being influenced by the other. The package unit are also known as the central air conditioner. They are the kind of age bag that is mostly found in commercial buildings. They are usually being sized from 5 to 50 tons, but the unit can be combined up to 200 tons. They are mostly placed on the roof, thus sometimes being termed as the rooftop unit. The last of the section is the chiller system. Chiller is basically a central plant which when combined with some distributed equipment can be used as air conditioning. This is achieved by distributing chilled water. They are usually being employed when the tonnage requirement is above 200 tons. Let's take a look at the HVAC circle. HVAC services is a delicate service with consistent procedures. The system needs to be properly planned from the onset before the project execution even takes place. As we all know that over or under engineering has many negative effects. For example, oversized chiller will cycle rapidly. This will create fluctuation in room temperature and wearing down of the chiller machine. Thus, we can only achieve a consistent system by running load calculations and simulating the energy performance using softwares. Based on this, we can deduce the following cycles. We have the analysis stage the design stage, the cost estimation stage, the installation stage, and the maintenance and repair stage. On this note, professionals in the industry include 1. The HVAC installers. These are the people to carry the execution process. They are individuals that undo the installation. We still have the HVAC technicians that ensured the equipment operates at the manufacturing standard. They also diagnose the system problem and make repairs to faulty ones. These professionals must be good in troubleshooting air distribution, refrigerant, and electrical problem. They undo the final stage which is the maintenance and the repair stage. The third set of professionals in the industry are the HVAC engineers or the system designers. They are basically the individuals with educational certificates or professional licenses to design components. They will be the bodies this our tutorial series will be focused because they are the one to be held accountable for any lapses in the system. HVAC engineers do achieve efficient system by considering one the space they are to design, two what will be the installation cost, three the comfort level they are to design to. This is termed the design goal for the efficiency of the system to use and the efficiency of the system designed. This is called the relative efficiency. The last is the maintainability of the system employed. The fourth set of professionals in the industry are the HVAC supervisors. HVAC supervisors are the individuals that oversees the outcome of the project. These four professionals form the HVAC contractors. 
kudos to professionals in the industry. They all do deliver exceptional services. I'm proud to be an HVAC engineer. Are you too? Wish every one of us best of luck in our careers. Hope you enjoyed this video. Click on the like button and don't forget to like and subscribe.